floor is open to anyone. You can ask us questions and then we will, yeah, answer as best we can. I guess for me, uh, the biggest part and within our office, I think that we've expressed was confidentiality. Because we're doing these circles in these clients' homes. I do work with like juvenile offenders and I know someone offered like headphones, but they can have them here, but we don't know if they're plugged in and we're start we start to talk about personal things. So how do we battle that? Yeah, okay, Garcia, that's a great question. Um how do we manage confidentiality when we're working with these youth and we cannot control what's happening at their homes? And there's gonna be information at times that's uh, tough information, private information, confidential. How do we do that? So before Kimmy and I respond, I wanna open it up to the group also, uh, Kay Garcia, to offer some feedback on how, how can we respond to the need to keep these youth safe in some of the things that they share? Unmute and chime in before Kimmy and I respond. How can we support confidentiality? We can't control what's happening over there. How can we do that? Unmute yourself and chime in. I see you, Caitlin. Great, great. go ahead. Uh, one thing we added to our check-in ritual is who's in the room, who's in earshot right now? Who's, who's in earshot where you are right now? And everybody just says that. Mm -hmm. So at least we all know. Mm -hmm. So create some agreements up front around, you know, safety and respect for their environment. Who's around? How can they possibly get into a place or a space that minimizes distractions or interruptions or interferences and communicating that with the people in their household that they're going to be on a call? for half an hour, hour, hour and a half, giving everyone a heads up, which means they can't be interrupted. Little sibling can't come in or, right? Anybody else, chime in, chime in. Some other people wanna hear from you. Let's support Kay Garcia with this. Yes, Michelle, I see you. So we've suggested that if they're in a room that they play either low music or white noise outside of the door so that they, people can't hear what they're saying outside. Mm -hmm. Michelle, if they have an opportunity to, mm -hmm. you know, get a noise uh, blocker and put it at the bottom of their door or some soft music, letting everyone know this is the time. If you hear that soft, soft music going, I am in my private space, right? Anybody else, maybe and even on that door, become creative, but do not disturb. Right. Warning, do not enter. Enter at your own risk danger zone right being creative giving everyone a heads up this is why letting their guardian know letting whoever their caretaker is their parent their guardian during this time if you see this on the door doesn't mean that i don't want you to come in i got some cool stuff happening there yeah beth i saw that our co-founder said there's an option that they can also use chat when it's that private communication that's going on. As the group, as facilitator, let's give them a heads up that, hey, this is the oh, time yeah. where we gotta go into our silent mode. We're going off the grid, people. We're going off the grid. It's time to go chat. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, Kay Garcia, before we, go ahead, Felicia. I was gonna say, I think one way to reinforce it is to make mention in the reminders of the agreements each session about confidentiality and making sure your space is safe so mm -hmm. that um, the session, you know, people can communicate uh, without reservation about, you know, what they share openly. Because a lot of times you go to talk before you think, oh, let me type it in the share. You may verbalize it. And so just reinforcing that at the beginning of each session about confidentiality. Mm-hmm, Felicia, thank you for that. So making sure up front, letting them know that you as a facilitator, it's important for you to make sure they're safe and confidentiality and making sure that as facilitators, it's never a one and done. So we don't just say it up front throughout your time with them. You're reminding them, hey, this is a safe place. Is it, should we go off the grid and chat about this? Remember, we wanna make sure that we're honoring confidentiality. Hey, I just saw someone walk behind you. Should we pause for a second and make sure? Yeah, Kay Garcia, thumbs up if you feel like you got some good stuff on that. 
that was good. It also addressed if the kid doesn't feel comfortable talking about their own stuff in their own home, we can do it. Yeah, a couple yeah. other things I can uh, add to that is you, you can come work. up with a hand signal, right? So if, if some, yeah, we heard we heard most mm -hmm. of that there. You can come up with a hand signal too, right? So that they don't have to say it, or they can put it in a chat. But they, you know, they can have like if they put this, that means stop sign, right? Yo, like somebody just walked in here, so you can give them that Thanks. stop sign. If you have the ability to co-facilitate, that could be a huge thing to basically pull a kid if they need to have one-on-one -on -one sharing into a private chat room with you and the, the facilitator, your co-facilitator and the student to be able to give them that if there's something coming up in that moment. So if you have the ability to co-facilitate, that could be a huge advantage in this space where we have so much going on and we can't really like pull kids aside a lot. So uh, those are just two things I'd like to offer in addition to all the other amazing ideas. that. And then that last thing is modeling confidentiality. So I think being able to uh, give them examples of how you might share things because they might need to, they, they might have a lot going on that they really want to share and just saying, okay, share what you feel comfortable with. And here's some, how I might share it based on an example. So they understand how to do that. So I love it. 